your teachers think you were very talented at story writing? And did you write lots of stories? Can you remember any of them? Um, did my teachers think I was... <laughs> I, yeah, well, it was definitely my best thing at school, story writing. So I can remember some, some teachers thinking that I was good at story writing. And I used to love it when my stories were read out to the class. That was my favourite thing. So, um... I'm, I'm, I am remembering stories I wrote at school, and I'm embarrassed. <laughs> um, the, the one that I finished, the, the longest story I ever wrote while I was about, when I was 11, was a story about seven cursed diamonds, funnily enough. And there are echoes of that story, I suppose, in Harry Potter. Do you write stories too, Harry? And is it your best thing? So you're good at everything. I wasn't good at everything. You've got to carry on <laughs> practicing. You know. My chemistry was very bad. That's why Snape teaches potions. It's my least favourite subject, so that's where the potions came in the dungeons with the bad teacher. <laughs> what does the children's high level group do? Oh, that's an excellent question. We started this charity um, because there are a lot of children, and I mean hundreds and thousands of children, shut up in institutions, uh, mainly in Eastern Europe. And uh, these children are often called orphans, but in fact they're very rarely orphans. They normally have at least one, one parent still living, and for a lot of reasons, often poverty, or because the children have so some sort of physical or, or mental problem, they have been um, <coughs> taken to live in an institution. And uh, all the research there is on this kind of subject says that just about the worst thing you can do to a young child is raise it in a big institution. And I found out about this when I read a very terrible newspaper article, um, it's probably about getting on for five years ago now, about a boy who was kept nearly 24 hours a day in, in what they call a cage bed, which is exactly what it sounds, it's a bed has a cage all around it. And it's, uh, th these are, things aren't used in this country, but there are still countries in Eastern Europe where they're used for both adults and children. And that story shocked me so much, I really wanted to, to try and do something about it. So that's how the children's high level group um, got started. So I would like to thank you all very much if you have bought a book or if you're intending to buy a book, because all of the money um, that, that would normally go to the author will be going instead to the charity to hopefully help those children. It's a very good question, thank you for that. Your favourite author when you were young and why? Who was my favourite author when I was younger? Um, I had quite a few favourite authors. Um, I liked uh, Elizabeth Gouge, who wrote a book called The Little White Horse, that was one of my favourites when I was your age. It's a very good sort of magical story, I liked that. Um, I liked Paul Gallico, I loved E. Nesbitt. E. Nesbitt wrote a collection of fairy tales um, that are very, very funny. Um, and if you, if you like the tales of Beedle the Bard, I, should, I would definitely try and get your hands on a copy of E. Nesbitt's fairy tales because they're, they're very good indeed. But I, re I read a lot of, uh, of authors who are supposed to be for adults as well. I read, I don't ever remember my parents saying, you can't read that, it's too old for you, which I think is a really good thing to do. So I, you know, I'm always testing myself and reading ahead of my age, which I think is, is a very good thing to do. What were you scared of when you were young? Um, exactly what I'm scared of now, spiders. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is that I gave, as you probably know if you've read Harry Potter, I gave Ron that fear. He, he's terrified of spiders and Rupert Grint, who plays Ron in the films, is absolutely petrified of spiders. And I feel so sorry for him because I kept putting Ron in these situations where he, where he had to um, encounter these, Rupert's not happy. And, uh, and there are giant spiders in the seventh film as well, so he's really not happy. <laughs> what places in Edinburgh gave you ideas for Harry Potter? Well, to tell you the truth, I get asked this a lot, and I'd planned nearly everything, um, sort of location-wise, in Harry Potter before, before I ever lived in Edinburgh. So uh, I did get a very funny letter a few years ago from um, someone who worked at a very famous school in Edinburgh, saying, uh, Dear J.K. Rowling, I'm sure you'd like to come and look around my school, as it's obvious that my school inspired Hogwarts. 
So I wrote back and said, well, what, it's a lovely invitation, thank you, but in fact it didn't inspire Hogwarts. I invented Hogwarts about seven years before um, I ever saw your school. So he wrote back to me and said, no, you're wrong. It did inspire Hogwarts. <laughs> Who should know? And he's probably still wandering around that school saying it. He's probably claiming that he inspired Dumbledore. I don't know. There are some very strange people out there. So, um, I don't, there's nothing, um, there are no places, there are no real places that, that I took for, um, for places in, in the Harry Potter novels. The odd person may have given me the odd idea for a character in Harry Potter, but not really places.